Check, check, check. Check, check. There you go. What's going on? I don't know. I'm just, it's not open yet, is it? It's not up yet, is it? Yeah. Oh, no, we're not on Facebook yet, no. All right, cool. I'm going to do something real quick. How you doing, man? Runner, man. I had a, uh, I had an event. <laughs> I left there at 315, haul ass here to get this stuff set up. You see, I'm sweating. Really? I had the speakers. All I had to, oh man. I got it done though. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I left there at 315, got here flying. All right, cool. And look all right? I don't know. Yeah. Look like, all right. Yes, sir. Let me find, uh, where all right. Choose wisely with these songs, cause at the beginning, oh, okay. at the beginning of Larry's on, I mean uh, Gary, it had, um, they tried to flag it. Oh, oh, okay. I'm like, Dad, it's only one song played. I mean, like it was an interview. Gotcha. It was right on top of that. That's how they do, though. You know how it is. Yeah. Uh, that this might work. They might leave me alone with this one. Let's see. Minimize that. Uh, Got to open up Facebook. Let's see. All right, we up. All right. Let me share it to the other pages.
Welcome, everybody. Volume three of our Impact Players of Philadelphia, DJs, trying to share it all the pages. Give me a second. We got a big one for you today. Got a pen groove. Now we ready, rock and roll. Welcome, everybody. This is a big interview right here. Big one. Big one. <laughs> we got the legendary DJ Spinbad in the building. What's up, J Rock? Hey, there he is. Yeah, man. I appreciate you having me on, man. You know, oh, Music Factory, oh. Entertainment, DJ Cafe. You know how it is, man. Good to see you, man. Man, let me tell you something, man. Through doing my research and homework, you are a really an impact player in Philadelphia, but one of the most humblest um, of them all. Thank you. And the accolades go far <laughs> and 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 not recognized appropriately and and we go clear all that up that up today <laughs> i i appreciate it man I, I no, we, we, we go clear up a lot of stuff today because you know it's, it's a um i'm the same well i'm not an outspoken person myself mm -hmm. that's why at the beginning of the dj cafe somebody else would always host right I've never hosted i've never like I, i'm always the one taking the pictures and not being in the pictures yeah, you know I mean, so I, I relate. I relate in, in a sense now um, with this live stuff and, and uh, the past year, year, year and a half, I hosted our last anniversary party and all that and got my confidence up because I never liked my voice. So I never yeah. would be an outspoken person. I always was in the background. <laughs> That's funny. I, I don't like the way I sound either. I don't like my yeah, voice. Yeah. Yeah. So when, you know, when we got to talk, I'm like that, like, it's it's the same thing. Like we we in the same boat, but you have a lot of stuff that need to uh, that people need to know, you know. And and, uh, and we here to to get all that out. <laughs> I'm with it. So let's start all the way from the beginning. Um, where, when, and where did you get the bug? And and how um, old were you? All right. Well, uh, it was it was basically in, in the Germantown neighborhoods where I got the bug. I was uh, about ten years old. Um, and I know that seems young to get that bug, but I always hung around guys that were older than I was. Mm -hmm. And that's what they were doing. So, you know, as a young kid, you know, you look up to different people for different reasons. Um, I was always, you know, always had music in my blood. Um, you know, playing drums young. My father taught me to play drums. He was a drummer. Uh -huh. So the DJ thing in the music came a little natural. But, um, yeah, it was, I was about 10 years old in Germantown growing up and uh, hanging out with some guys there group called Positive Funk, this guy, DJ Dr. Rock, you know, just watching guys and just wanting to emulate <laughs> them, you know. Dr. Rock? Dr. Rock, DJ Dr. Rock, a man walk. <laughs> so that's that's how I got started. That's uh -huh. how I caught the bug, rather, the bug, you know. Uh -huh. All right, so uh, for, the, for the older folks around, um, we all know that uh, the beginning of everything went through uh, groups. Yes. So, like, it wasn't a whole lot of um, individual DJs. It was groups and stuff that, that uh, well, you know, they, they, everybody had a sound system. Somebody, every, each group had a, a big sound system, and then the DJs came within that sound system. Yeah. Where, 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 where's, um, where's your origin from? My origin is from um, uh, the Boogie Boys. Um, that's how we started. We were young. Um, I was probably the youngest, but uh, I had my, my man, Nathan G., we call him the Duke of Poetry, now AKA DJ Nate G. We had MC Kid Disco and my man MC Bobby B. So we were young kids going around. 
that was our little group, the Boogie Boys. And we would go around doing all of the house parties and things of that nature. Uh -huh. And um, finally, we got a chance to do some bigger parties. We got put on by a group, a uh, guy, Leroy Carter, formed a group Force Five. And he put us on some of the flyers to get us, you know, some of the bigger events because he saw the things we were doing in the neighborhood and, you know, thought we can bring a little something to the table. So uh -huh. that was, that was, you know, big shout out to Leroy. He, he put us on, Leroy Carter, Force Five. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. So, uh, where, let's go to where, you know, you got something like, mm. all right, people start to pay attention. Like, all right. It's it, like, like where, where that confidence comes from. you like, you, you have to, you get to that point in DJing where you're like, yeah, I'm all right. But then you get to that point where you like, yo, like, they know what it is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. <laughs> now, me personally, I, I, you know, the way I am, I would never say that about myself. But, you know, I was probably, probably about 14 when it really started to, to, to you know, shine and that little light clicked on, you know, and you know, a lot of guys that I hung around with, you know, coming up with in the neighborhoods, you know, they were really big on a lot of the DJs, you know, around town. So they would always compare. So that was, you know, some of my barometers were based on what my friends would tell me. So my validation were to a lot of my friends, like I said, my man, Nate G, my buddy, Gary, rest in peace. They would sit around and say, hey, you know, I think you got something to something special. Um, I never thought that, but they always saw that. Uh -huh. and, uh, so I was probably about 14 when someone really stepped to me and said, hey, I think you, you know, you have something special here. And it's usually that way. Like you just think you just going through the motions, but everybody looking at you, no, nah, yo, you <laughs> like, what? It's just, I'm just being, I'm just natural to me. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, man. You have that, you know, we all know you, you know, you J rock as well. You know, you come up, I know you said you, you looked up to your big brother, uh -huh. but you do have some of the, you know, God given talent that you have to hone that talent. But, you know, you have that base of that guy giving talent. They saw some things in me, and they pushed me to be better. So, you know, you're in the basement, you know, trying to create things and do, do you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so that's that's probably, you know, about 14 where it was like the, the light bulb went on a little bit. All right. Now we're going to get right to it. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> The all the other interviews, man, we've been trying to keep the interviews within an hour. They've been going an hour, 15, hour, half. <laughs> we were, but because it's so much information and once yeah. it gets going, it gets going. I understand. So now the transformer scratch. Yes. Who does that belong to? That scratch belongs to me. DJ spin bad out of Philadelphia. Um, I know it's a lot of stories about that scratch. Um, but like you said, if you are a, a, a hip hop historian, not just locally, if you're really into the craft and you did a little research, you, you would probably, my name would pop up. Now it's a lot of butts after it. It is what it is. <laughs> you know, it's just something that, that I created, you know, um, I, I, it was years. I mean, like I said, I was a kid, you know, kind of playing around, practicing, you know, and uh, I, you know, you, you know how it was, J-Rock. When you were young, you practiced, you know, uh -huh. after school, you know, and I play sports too. So I would go, you know, to baseball, football practice, come home, and I'm playing records. And uh, one of my buddies, uh, DJ Chameleon, my man Larry, shout out to him. I, you know, we used to go back and forth. You know, I would be at his house, he'd be at my house. And one day I'm just kind of playing around and I'm trying to, you know, back then it was about creating. It was about coming up with your own concepts. As much as you looked up to certain DJs, I didn't want to emulate people. So I was constantly trying to develop my own sound and my own style. And, you know, you sit there in the basement or whatever, and you're playing with things. And, and what happened was I was, even back then, you know, we didn't have the equipment that had uh, effects. You know, we have that now on the mixers. I'm trying to make my own effects, you know, so you know, I'm just playing with things and doing things. And, and I literally stumbled upon it by accident. So, you know, I'm playing songs and I'm like, well, let me see if I can make it echo you know, do different things. And I'm just playing with it. And it was just boom, boom, boom. And all of a sudden, I just grabbed the record. I wasn't even paying attention because DJ Chameleon, my buddy, was talking to me. And I was just kind of moving the channel. I wasn't even using the fader because I was trying to do something else. And I grabbed the record and brought it back while I was moving it. 
And that sound, you know, that came out, he just said, oh, wait a minute. You know, what was that? You know, I was like, I don't know. I'm just messing around. And I wound up doing it again. And then at that point, it was something, you know, that I developed to move forward. Mm -hmm. So every week, you know, we would do, you know, events every week. You know, you have those performances back in my era. I didn't do a lot of club stuff. We did a lot of performances at private events or, or recreation centers and stuff like that. So you would have to come up. You have your MCs out front. You know, you let them do their thing. And then at some point, you had your own thing. And you always had to try to bring something new to the table. You didn't want to come, you know, every week with the same, you know, repertoire. So, so what happened was we were at a place called Circus City. It was up in Norristown, Pennsylvania. And oddly enough, the first time I actually did it in public was at a battle. So I, I've never, I had always done it in the basement, but I never did it at a party. I kind of saved that one, like, you know, up the sleeve scenario, <laughs> you know. And I was doing a battle. Uh, my man, Master Vic, great DJ. Um, one of, you know, some, you know, uh, other cats that were in the battle, but it's basically me and Master Vic. And that was the first time I actually did it in public. And when I did the scratch, I did it in such a way that it was kind of slow motion to kind to emphasize what I was doing. And back then with the battles, you know, you would look at someone and you would do something. So that's how I did it, to, you know, just kind of did it a little slow to make it really stand out. Mm. Uh, I had so many different rhythms and different ways to do it, but that particular one, I did it for the first time because I know I hear a lot of stories with people talking about, well, this one did this to it and this one did that to it. It wasn't the only way that I can do it. I did it that way specifically mm -hmm. to, to get the point across because I thought, you know, maybe I was, I don't know, I was a little bit ahead of it, but I thought I said, if I did it a couple of different ways, people may not really understand what was going on. So I kind of kept it a little mellow to make it stand out. And it actually did stand out. You know, it was a lot of people at that particular event. And it's funny, Jay, it's, you know, back then, you remember the big camcorders with the had, you know, you got the light on top and make, you know, so during the course of the battle, it was being recorded. So the DJ Master Vic I was battling, they were recording that particular portion. But I went on after him. And oddly enough, when I went on, the light went out. It was one of those things, I guess, was supposed to be an intimidation factor. I don't know. They, these were people that was, that was with him, you know, his, his guy. So as soon as I started doing that scratch, J-Rock, all of a sudden that light popped back on. <laughs> yeah. So I thought that was funny. You know, I remember that like it was yesterday. It was funny to me, you know, but I didn't think it would get to, you know, to where it is now. Mm -hmm. But that is basically the origin of it. And, you know, no matter what anyone tells you, that's, you know, and, you know, we've had talks in the past about different things. And I'm, I'm not, you know, one to, you know, toot my horn or to try to disrespect anyone. But all I, all I always ask about, you know, with, with that scratch is just give me my due respect for something that I created. That's it. I don't, I'm not a, a Facebook person. I'm not social media. You don't hear me say anything. Uh -huh. I just, 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 you know, hey, I just go along doing what I'm doing. And the people that know, they know. But at the same time, you do want that little bit of respect, you know, yeah, for yeah, something that you indeed. create. As you should, yeah. Yeah. Now there are some other scratches that uh that you got un under your hat. <laughs> yes. Well, under your belt, because yeah, they, yeah. they belong to you, so they're under your belt, not under your hat. You're not hiding them. <laughs> and what are yeah. they? So you you know, people, you know, once again, people name things. You just do things and you create, but I'm not one to name anything, you mm -hmm. know. So you probably heard someone mention like the hurricane scratch, you know, that's when you just, you know, you just okay. shiver and, you know, some people call it a shiver scratch, uh -huh. but that's something that I created. Um, breaking down a record, just in syllables, things of that nature. That's something uh -huh. I, I was the first to do that. Um, pushing a record forward, specifically like on it's time, you know, you're pushing a record forward to do different rhythms. So it's, it's a couple of different things that, that, you know, that I had created um, that, a lot of people may not realize, you know, but obviously, you know, that transformer thing, you know, that elevated the whole game basically. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and all, all, all you hear is crazy because they, they skip all that part and they go straight <laughs> KD, KD yeah. being the first one to have it on wax. Oh yeah. Shout out to Grand Dragon KD. Uh -huh. My man. I'm going yeah. to get him too. I'm going to get him more here. Yeah. But um, it, 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 the whole, all that gets missing because it goes straight to the wax. So, okay, this is what okay. the first one to get on wax, you know. And I don't know, I just, the, no matter what happens, people need to keep it real, man. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. And that's, and that's, I think that was part of the issue, but I, I like I said before, I never said anything. You know? And the, the, the history gets misconstrued mm-hmm. you know, where, where like, we got a lot of youngins. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the things that you're saying, they don't, they don't know, but they're doing these things. Right. So they're learning a day. You know what I mean? Like, like they like, Oh, I, I just do it. Cause I, I don't know. I just do it. <laughs> well, guess <Right>. what? <laughs> yes. It's, like, uh, you know, they spin back. <laughs> no, I appreciate that, man. I, I really do. And, um, you know, like I said, that's something that comes up in a lot of discussions amongst DJs. And oh, I'm no. glad, you know, I appreciate you, number one, reaching out to me, giving me the opportunity to be oh, on the no show. Doubt, no doubt, man. Uh, you know how I feel about the craft and the cafe. You know, I, I do a lot of things, traveling a lot. So sometimes, you know, obviously I don't get to be there, but I am definitely moving forward. I always tell my crew that, you know, we need to show, you know, like Vader, I know DJ Vader, shout out to Vader Mix Plus. He's always in there, you know what I mean? So. I want to be a part of it, you know, a little bit more when I'm, you know, a little less travel. I know we're in this pandemic situation, but once we get past that, whenever you got you time, see me as our, we would love to have you whenever you got time. No. <laughs> you know, and I, like I said, I appreciate that. But um, yeah, the, the transformer thing, man, you know, I'll say, and I know I, I did watch an interview with Corey, shout out to my man, DST, uh-huh. Corey DST. You know, sometimes things get a little twisted, you know, like you said, it is what it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it's what it is. So you can tell and, me. And you, plus, you and plus at that time, at that time, it wasn't a lot of like we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have all the, right. the, the instant gratification that, that we do today. So whatever happens around you, you think that that's law. Yes. So it could happen in, in, in all these different areas. Like, well, not areas, but, it, you know, something that you're watching develop. You, you think that's all, you know, you know, right. so you never know how people are looking at uh at different things until the truth come out. So we got right. it right here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you know I mean, now let's go to your battle career because you was a battle guy. <laughs> I, I heard you, 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 you know I mean, you, you, you missed the battle battle. So let, yeah. let's talk about um, some of your battles, like, and who, who, who you battled. You know, it's funny coming up, you know, in the early 80s, that was just a, a reputation thing. You know, you got into battles, it was no, um, love lost between dj it was about fun and competition you know it wasn't a hate factor um but uh, uh man we battled a lot of people man i mean i never you know i had the battles like as time went on you know when you had certain djs you know kind of coming up in the ranks you kind of left that alone that was our way of just trying to make a name for ourselves so uh-huh. um my man dj lightning rich rest in peace you know that was a fun battle man you know because lightning rich had a lot of skill man and he's one of those guys i wish he was still here for you to talk to uh-huh. you know um you know like i said master vic you know you got my man dj grand via astro funk rest in peace you know we had a lot of fun times back then man. It, was, it was really fun but i am proud and happy to say that i'm undefeated to this day that's all i'm going to say I'm undefeated, <laughs> undefeated. Not the truth no more. Yeah, I mean, you just, you just have to throw that at the right. I'm, I'm uh, undefeated until to this day, right here. Like sixteen and zero. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> oh man. Get out while you're on top. Get out while you're on top. There no you more go. battles. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you remember. Do you remember the uh, Philly New York battles? Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah, man. So we, you know, that was that was cool stuff, man. Um. A lot of people don't know about some of that. You know, some of the, the uh, New York guys came up, and I wound up getting paired up against uh, Jam Master Jay. Wow. And I'm sorry. Once again, I'm rest in peace, Jay. <laughs> I had to give it to him. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, it was a Philly thing. It was Philly, New York. Man. Man. We ain't playing no games, man. <laughs> it is what it is. But once again, it's just that sweet competition. You know, it was just, it was all love, man. That's what it was. But it was fun. Damn, Master Jay. Yeah, man. And I was a young guy, man. You know, I looked up to these guys. I'm young. You know, here I am going up against them. But I couldn't show you no pity. You've got to do it the Philly way. Mm, it is, yeah. yeah. Philly yeah. show no remorse when it comes to that battle. Not at all. Period. Not at all. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna go to. Uh, I'm a. I'm a. Let's go to sports. I heard you. You like you're a big baseball guy. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, yeah. Um, a lot of people. Well, you know, some of my close friends know, but I was drafted to play professional baseball when I was in a junior in high school. Um, by the White Sox, Chicago White Sox, and uh, I was I was a center fielder. I was pretty daggone good. You know, I hate 
you know, I have to say, obviously to, to be scouted and drafted. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I wound up tearing up my knee to the extent that it wasn't the same. You know, back then you're talking about 85, 86, you know, it wasn't like now you can, you know, tear up your knee, have a surgery in your back next season. Yeah. And then back then it, it was, it was almost just a done situation, but it was a good ride. You know, I still got to play a little bit with them. Um, before I went and did some other music things, but uh, that was that was a uh, something that's a, a, one of those little known facts of many that's that's in my little black book. But yeah, so <laughs> I was out there doing that. That's why I had to get that in before we went to that next level. <laughs> <laughs> try try to keep things in order. <laughs> yeah. All right, now let's 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 talk about. Uh, do I want to go tour life yet, or I want to hey. do something else before that? I'm following your lead, buddy. All right, let's let's go tour life. Mm -hmm. uh, and who who are some of the uh, the artists that you've you've um, played for? Um, some some of the biggest parties that you've done, like like mm -hmm. enlighten us on, on on the your your the accolades that's in your head, like the things that stand out to you. What is what is right. the biggest party? Um, and the artists that you, that you played for or, or work for when you're out on tour and things like that. Okay. I am um, predominantly toured with uh, New Edition and Belle Biv DeVoe, predominantly. Um, I was connected with them. Um, if, if people don't know who Hiram Hicks is. Mm -hmm. Right now, he's, you know, he's a, he's a big music executive now. Back then, he was like, you know, a party promoter, things of that nature. And uh, I met him uh, at the After Midnight. Wow. Um, it was a club back in Philly. I wasn't even old enough to be in the club, but I was in there, you know, doing, you know, doing some playing and doing some gigs and stuff like that. And um, that's how we developed a relationship. Uh -huh. to, this, to this day, I'm not sure how he actually got connected to New Edition, but he called me up one day and said, hey, you know, uh, New Edition's looking for a DJ to tour with them. And I'm like, okay, you know, what does that have to do with you? You know, to this day, I don't know how that connection came about. Uh -huh. He says, he says, no, I'm gonna take care of it. And um, <laughs> so funny. I remember him saying, he says, next Tuesday, I'm going to call you. We're going to go to LA and meet them. And we're going to have like a, <clears throat> like a, an audition of sorts. And, and Jay, I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. You know, <laughs> I didn't think, of, I didn't think about it again. Lo and behold, that next Tuesday morning, Federal Express is knocking at my door with a plane ticket. I didn't pack. I didn't do anything because I didn't believe them. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And uh -huh. now I had to be like, kind of hurry up and gather myself. No sooner than Federal Express pulls off, he's calling me. Are you ready to go to the airport? I wasn't ready because I didn't believe what he was saying. Mm -hmm. So I run and, you know, put some stuff in a bag, you know, like, okay, uh, you know, and I go out to, be, to the car and it's like, well, I don't have my turntables there. So he said, don't worry about it. Man, we take off, we go to LA. Um, so we get to the, you know, the airport in LA, Link, Lincoln Town Car pulls up to pick us up. He pops open the trunk, brand new 1200s in the trunk. Wow. So he was already, you know, anticipating something. So we go over to a uh, little rehearsal hall, you know, I set up and I'm just in there, you know, messing around. And uh, he says, you know, just staying here, you know, the guys, I can hear the guys rehearsing in another room, but I'm in this room, I set up, I'm just playing around, you know, just playing songs and cutting a little bit here and there. And all of a sudden, you ever get that feeling that someone's watching you? Uh -huh. <laughs> and I turn around, and they're all standing there, all of them, the whole crew. And Ronnie is the first one who comes over. He says, man, you got the job. And that was, <laughs> I guess I'm auditioning, not even realizing I'm auditioning. And I you know, started touring with them. And initially, it was kind of like an in-between you know, act kind of song kind of thing. I was with them, but it was in between certain songs. I would do certain things. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, so we did that Any Heartbreak tour. There was, you know, uh, Al B. Shore, Bobby Brown, New Edition. Wow. That was a big tour, man, you know. But yeah. the funny thing is, when I left to go that, to that audition, I never came back home for the, like, for the life. I was gone for about 10 months. I literally never came back home <laughs> once I won that gig. So, you know, we toured everywhere, man. You know, doing, you know, big shows. Back then it was the Spectrum, you know. And, you know, instead it's not, you know, back now it's the Wells Fargo Center in Philly was the Spectrum yeah. back. Uh -huh. And I mean, you know, we did five dates, you know, it, it, it was the tour was so popular. We would do a lot of larger cities, just multiple nights. You know, it was incredible to come back to your hometown and people, you know, see you, you know, coming from where I came from. Yeah. 
it was incredible, dude. It was it was a nice, you know, it, it was I was blessed. I'll say that. I was I was definitely blessed. So that's where that tour, you know, started with the new edition thing. And, you know, in between that, you know, um a, a lot of people know, you know, you got Ronnie, you got Mike, you got Rick. They things are dwindling down a little bit, you know, it's kind of slowing down. You know, you tour, you you do it when you're hot. And then, you know, when that album starts to cool down a little bit, you know, things cool off a little bit. Uh-huh. So they took a, a slight hiatus. And they were developing that whole Bell Bib DeVoe thing. And, you know, I didn't think of much of it, you know. Um, so that's what they were developing. And, and Babyface, oddly enough, gave them the idea to do that, you know. Um, so that was kind of weird that they, you know, they said, hey, you guys should try to do something on your own. So after, you know, that whole new edition thing kind of cooled down a little bit, a lot of people don't know this. I actually toured with Graham Kuba for the Crown Rulers. So we opened up for Tough Crew on a college tour. So I was always consistently kind of, you know, working, you know, kind of like under the radar, uh-huh. you know, shout out to my man, Grand Poobah, Camden. <laughs> but yeah, man, they hit me up, you know, some of the cats, you know, Too Tough, you know, shout out to Too Tough, you know, detonated all those cats, man, they hit, hit me up, you know, and you say, hey, you know, they had Royal Rocker, but I, I'm not sure what actually happened, but they asked me to tour with them. So that was cool, man. We did a lot of college uh, gigs. You know, we opened up for Tough Crew, uh, uh, Crown Rulers, man, Grand Poopa. So after that, all of a sudden, I get this call for this Bell Biv DeVoe thing, and I didn't know where it was going, you know. But uh, it, it took me to a whole nother level, Jay, a whole nother level, doing that Bell Biv thing, man. Because, you know, when Poison first came out, it was something different. Mm-hmm. It was in that New Jack swing you know, error, but it was still slightly different from the new Jack swing. Uh-huh. And we didn't think it was going to be that big. You know, it was one of those things you sit in the studio, you know, you're listening to it and you're like, well, me personally, uh-huh. it's okay. Yeah, you know, it's, like, about, it's not, you know, eh. yeah, it had to grow on me, you know, it was something, you know, it had to kind of grow on me, but you know, once that thing hit the radio and it took off, I mean, you know, it was incredible. It was an incredible ride, man. I mean, I toured, I was blessed at a young, I'm, I'm 19 years old. You know, out there, you know, 19, about to turn 20, and I'm touring the world doing something that I love to do. I mean, a lot of people, you know, never see some of the things I've seen in my short life on this earth. They won't see in a lifetime, man. So I am blessed for that. Um, the Bell Bib DeVoe thing, I'm truly grateful, you know, for. Um, it took me a lot of places, man. And you're talking about parties. Uh-huh. To me, the biggest event, like just a single event outside of a, a concert, I actually did a party for the Sultan of Benai. For those that don't know, the Sultan of Benai is hard to believe, maybe the richest guy in the world. Right now, his net worth, they probably estimated, and this is this is true, you can look this up, at about a hundred dollars per second that he's his net worth. And his net and he gets that worth because his his main income comes from supplying natural gas to Japan. So that flow, that natural gas going to Japan gets him all of that money. So what happened was his daughter was turning 16 and she wanted entertainment, you know? So she literally asked uh, Belle Bib DeVoe, it was uh, Boys to Men and Stevie Wonder, which was weird combination for a 16 year old. So we wound up doing a little performance for her birthday, but then I DJ a party. Wow. It was incredible, dude, incredible. <laughs> I mean, something like that out, you know, I mean, you got people, you could do famous weddings, you know, things of that nature, but to, uh-huh. you know, Salt and the Benign, that I'll never forget that, that experience. You know, I'll never forget that. It was a great time. Wow. Yeah. I, I really I, wish you were a bragger, man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of stuff don't need to be, like, it's a lot of hidden gems that, that need to be plastered on walls and let people know. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but when I first, when I first, met you for the first time mm-hmm. I, I i i already knew I, I i felt that standoffish but that humble feel i that's that's what i got from you right. and it, it was it was just it's you, you're just a genuine person i, I know you. i i get i'm i'm i see this stuff that i do as politics mm. so i have to know how to deal with people right so i can i can i get uh stuff from people within two, three seconds. I, I, I can read a person in three seconds. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean, and I got that, that, that you had that glow. If that <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. You know I mean, you're, 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 it's, you're different than the, 
then the the the, the, the DJ a DJ is a bragger is yeah. a, I'm the shit. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, and yeah. and you're you're a, you're a talented person that just want people to see and know about uh, see your talent without having to get into the other stuff. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate that's part of hip hop, but that's that's part yeah. of hip hop to do the other stuff. But like I'm the same way, but I've 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 learned to 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 talk. I, yes. I didn't talk before. Like a lot of people, not the cafe ten years old. I didn't talk at the beginning. Yeah, at all. <laughs> you know what I mean, but I right. like. I like seeing people grow. I like I like right. seeing I like putting these two things together and, mm-hmm. and, and watching it grow. Yeah. I, if I don't know how to do something, I'm go I'm gonna point somebody point uh somebody in a direction to the person that can help them get that done. And then right. when it get done, I get goosebumps when I see them doing it. Yeah. That's my grad that's what I, when I get paid. That's how I get paid. Oh, that's good, man. I like that's what I said. I, and I always said that about you. You know, I say that to a lot of my crew and different people. I appreciate what you do and what you bring to the game in the art form. You know, I, I do, man. Keeping that thing going, um, not just, you know, your, your events, your DJing, but like you said, bringing up the younger guys and, and schooling them on, on the craft. It, it needs to it needs to continue, you know, and that's why I said I, I'm going to get, you know, more involved after, you know, we get past this this era we're in right now. But I was, you know, traveling so much, it was, uh-huh. it was tough, you know, it was tough. Yeah, but that, that same feel I get from you. I get that feel from you. <laughs> Man, you know, it's funny. A lot of people say, you know, like when you say, when you use that word standoffish, it wasn't, you know, a lot of people may take that as a negative. I'm not thinking I'm better than anyone. I'm just always looked at myself as a person in the background. You know, I don't try to pump my chest out or, you know, just, you know, I just do what I do. And like I said, I'm blessed to have done the things that I have done. And, you know, if I can pass something along, you know, Hey, I'm here for it. I mean, I, anyone ask me anything, uh, you know, about how to, you know, even wire up equipment, anything, you know, you have, you know, young guys coming up or even guys, even if some of our peers is trying to learn something different, you know, I'm here to help anybody. I'm, I, I don't have one, you know, in my DNA, Jay, I have no hate in my DNA. I am not nat- by natural, you know, DNA. I am not a hater, yep. and and all the people that are close to me will tell you that. I'll never say nothing bad about anyone, you know. I just try to, you know, I, I respect a lot of guys in the game, you know, uh-huh. even though that respect is not always reciprocated. There you go. But like we said earlier, <laughs> but you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't boast and say nothing or put somebody on blast. I don't say anything, mm-hmm. you know. Now I may mumble under my breath. I'm human, but I don't, you know, it's we like, you know, but I don't. Yeah, but I don't. You know, I don't let it get to me too much, you know. I beat my wife up when I get in the house. Man, I tell you, boy, they get on my nerves and this and that. <laughs> but nobody else see it. <laughs> oh man, it's crazy, man. Crazy life, but um, you know that, like you said, that tour thing took me a lot of places, man. I mean, you're talking, you know, Arsenio Hall, Jay Leno, American Music Awards. I mean, I, I remember, you know, as most of us probably looking at Soul Train on Saturdays with our family as children. Now, here I am standing on this stage with Don Cornelius asking me my name. It blew my mind. You know, it's like, man, I'm actually on Soul Train. Yeah. You know, the Apollo. I mean, you can, you know, look, you do some research, you look some of this stuff up. It is funny. I mean, old, old clips, you know, but um, a lot of people I don't think realize that, you know, like, you know, some of the friends people I grew up with, obviously, you know, you can you imagine, you know, you're growing up, you're seeing somebody that you grew up with on television. You're like, whoa, yeah. oh, I know that dude, you know? So it's kind of funny. I mean, like you said, you know, it's a lot that, that I've been blessed. I mean, like I said, you know, I, do you remember the show New York Undercover? Yeah. You remember that show? I was on that show. Wow. Um, you know, yeah. You know, it's funny. It's like, we, we'll talk behind, we'll talk <laughs> off camera. And, uh, you know, some, some things to look at, you know. So it's a lot of accomplishments and accolades that, like, you know, people, that fly under the radar, you know, with me. Because I'm just a guy in the background, you know. You start looking at Bill the like old videos. Sound, sound like a history in ghostwriting or something uh, like that. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, you know, you know the rules of that. Going that direction? <laughs> Technically, you're not supposed to. You make that agreement, that uh-huh. non-disclosure scenario. Uh-huh. You know, for a lot of different reasons. But, you know, I've done some production, some things that you'll be surprised. You uh-huh. know, I mean, the first one, one thing I will say outside of a non-disclosure true thing, but the first actual thing I was involved with, I was Man, it's probably 80, 1984. I'm a kid in the ninth grade. It was a guy by the name of Kay Williams Jr. Mm-hmm. He was a producer and he was with the group Breakwater. 
Oh, Remember Breakwater? Yes, yes. And uh, I, I, you know, linked up with him, and he kind of took me under his wing. And, you know, I was DJing, and he always liked, you know, he always compared my scratches and scratching to an instrument, you know, and he would have me do things with him. And at some point, you know, he pulled out that MPC 60 and all the different drum machines, and I started doing beats and stuff with him. And, you know, it was a group. Um, based out of part in Philly, part uh, New Jersey, called Pretty Poison back in the day. Mm. And um, they had a song called Nighttime. It, it actually, you know, made it, you know. Their second song was mm -hmm. Catch Me, I'm Falling, you know, some gold songs that I had some, you know, some credits on. And, you know, so that's how, I, and I was, like I said, like 14, 15 years old. You know, <laughs> he gave me the opportunity. So rest in peace to my man, Kay Williams Jr., you know. Um, some of the things that I, like I said, that the, the, the ghost writing slash ghost producing, you know, I did some remixes for uh, some people and uh, some groups that I work with, you know, the groups that I said I work with. Mm -hmm. So without saying, you know, certain things, yeah, you know, yeah. it's a remix. It's a song, smack it up, flip it, rub it down. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> so, check out that remix. See, see, see what you like. There you go. There you go. Now that 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 first time you came back to Philly, as uh, as BBD or New Editions DJ, which had the Spectrum. Yes, at the time, yeah, it was the Spectrum. What's that feeling coming to your hometown? Like you left one way and came back another way. What's Man, that was, feeling hitting that stage <laughs> in front of Philly? Man, it was like, crazy. Yeah, G Town. <laughs> <laughs> It was crazy, man. Yes, right. Shout out to Germantown, man. That's where I grew up at, man. You know, um, it was, it was once again, I hate to keep using the same, it was incredible, man. It's, can you imagine, here you are, it's 20,000 people, you know, and you're on this stage and, you know, Mike Bivens always showed me love. I was always the guy, once you, you know, like we said, you know, kind of little, you know, don't toot my horn too much. I mean, I'm on this big stage, so I'm here. But I never talked. I never asked for the mic. I, I never did any of that. But he always made sure that people knew that I was there. You know, even though I'm in the middle of the stage, you know, on top or whatever, you know, in those intros in Philadelphia, every time we played Philadelphia, Michael Bibbins always made sure that they knew that our DJ, Bell Bibbins, was from Philadelphia. And that was a great feeling, man. He would get on the mic before we got started. Lights are down. And he'll say something, you know, spin bad, you know, we're in your hometown and the crowd is going off, man. That was a lot of love, man. You know, it's so funny, man, because I'm more nervous. If I was cutting and scratching in front of you, I'm more nervous than doing that in front of 20,000 people. Yeah, yeah. I'm, you know, yeah. Cause it's a difference, you know, it's like, it's, you don't, you're just playing, you're not, you know, you're, you're zoning out, you know? Yep. So it was a great experience, man. And um, man, it's, it's, it was, it was great, great times, great times. But I was told uh, Peanut Gallery on the on the uh, on this device here asked uh -huh. ask you about LL Cool J. <laughs> 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 That's funny too. Um, I don't know if people like once again go back to like the old clubs. It was one uh, an after midnight scenario. Uh huh. I don't know if you remember this. Do you remember a freestyle that LL did to yeah. It's Yours? back in the day that it got actually pretty popular. Mm -hmm. I was the one playing for him. He wanted me to DJ for him. Like I didn't scratch or nothing, but he literally wanted me to be his DJ before Cut Creator and Bobcat. And it was the strangest thing, man. It was like, for some reason, it just didn't work out. It was, it, and it had nothing to do with him. It was me. I was too young at the time. Cause remember, I'm like 15. I can't do this. I can't, I was, you know, you know, you're in the neighborhood, you're in school, you know, it was, it was too much for me too early. So I respectfully declined, you know, but I could have, you know, I, I just didn't do it. You know, it was, I didn't feel, you know, I was too young. I wasn't ready for that, but I was definitely flattered, man. definitely flattered. Wow. Yeah, so, you know, you got so many, cause he was, you know, he was, he was basically on the, on the edge of stardom, you know, at that point, cause when he, you know, he did that freestyle and then after that, it was just, he was, you know, but you know, the, the funny part is years later, I don't know if you recall the, um, but why is super fest yeah. every Sunday they would have, I mean, every summer they would have the, but why is super fest concerts uh -huh. and we wound up actually being on the same concerts in certain cities. 
and he'd come up to me and Phil, you know, cut creator. And they knew, like, you know, just it's, it's, it's just funny to see guys after all of those years. And he remembered who I was and he gave me a hug and congratulated me for, you know, doing that BBD thing, you know. Um, you know, it's a lot of guys, man, that just show me a lot of love. And, and, and it's, uh, you know, from, you know, not just, you know, from Philadelphia, you know, different places. I mean, a lot of people I've met, um, you know, Spinderella, salt and pepper you know, Eric B. Rock Kim, you know, cats back then when we were doing concerts, they were at our concerts, you know, Mike Tyson, you know what I mean? I, I mean, you know, I met Michael Jackson, yeah. Prince. I mean, so many people look, you know, people don't know, like these guys were backstage at our concerts, mm -hmm. you know, where we were, you know, backstage at their concerts, you know, going to like Madonna, you know, people, I've got to be around a lot of different people. And that's why I said, I've been blessed, you know, to, to be able to do those things, man. And being, trying to be humble and just, you know, kind of playing my part. A lot of them, I think, looked at me in that way, you know, and say, hey, this guy, he's not trying to boast or brag or whatever. I'm just doing my part and they would, you know, literally speak to me first if they saw me uh -huh. and that, and that, that's, that's love, man. It, it really is. I mean, you got, you know, you know, you imagine you somewhere, Curtis blow somebody come up to you. Hey, what's up, Jay? You know, it's like, that's love, man. That's how it is, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I remember, um, like, I think it was like 2011, um, Lady B had her, uh, 30th anniversary at the Dell. Um, she would have the show in the summer. And they had a lot of different acts. And Bell Biv the Vogue was one of the acts. And I got a call from Michael Bibbins because at the time I had stopped. You know, I kind of stopped touring, you know, started doing some other things. And he called me up and says, hey, man, we coming to your town. You know, you know we can't do a show in your town, you know, not having <laughs> DJ, you know. Oh. Um, so we, we go there and Lady B, she didn't know that we were going to be there. You know, we were like a surprise guest. And, and that was a good feeling too, man, that, you know, to see her the different people and, you know, all of how that went down. And once again, in front of, you know, your hometown, you know, at the Dell, you know, it reminded me of the, you know, the Spectrum days and the touring, you know, cause this was 11. So I was, you know, wasn't touring anymore in 2011, but, you know, with them, but it brought back those memories. And a friend of mine actually got on me about it because in the beginning of that show, it goes back to when you're talking about, you don't talk. Mm -hmm. And so they pushed me the guys pushed me to introduce them so i'm introducing them lights are down and i'm saying what i'm saying not one time jay did i say my own name not once i mean i think about it now you know i'm like but that's who i am i like i wasn't focused on that i was just focused on the task i wasn't trying to you know hey you know they spent bad here you know i didn't do none of that you know now after the fact you think about it but that's just what well, it's kind of relating to what you said that just who we are you know I just didn't say anything uh, going back to that, uh, the LL freestyle, mm. they had the thing at, uh, uh, what that place at? Uh, what's that? Cotman, Cotman Avenue? What's that? Um, anyway, they had the old school, um, little concert there. They had, um, EST, they had Rams, mm. they had, uh, Tough Crew. Yeah. And it's, it's just funny to me to, um, the guy asked the, the Miz was DJing, but he wasn't DJing at the time. It was somebody right. else on before Miz got on. And he asked him for that freestyle. <laughs> he didn't have a clue what he was talking about. He was like, <laughs> and, and when you said that, I, right. I had to go look and listen to I had to go research and listen to it. Yeah. Because he said it to me, because you know, like I was there with sound. I was helping out right. with sound and stuff. So he, he said it to me and I was like, I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. I, <laughs> I went and looked, and I heard it, and then now we're talking, and yeah. you're me that, that you had parts of that. Yeah, yeah, and, and it, it was a it was a crazy freestyle too, man. You listen to it, you know, <laughs> lyrically. That was that was the man. That was the man. Yeah, man, it's good. Oh man! All right, now we went to the accomplishments. Now let's go to after. Um, it's a feeling that the, the, the after effect and the after um, the, the feeling watching other people try to and do it successfully, like capitalize from your inventions. Mm. Like you got, you got um, Grandmaster Flash. He had a whole oh. former pad. Like he had Man. a, you know what I mean? So like, 
how does it feel? Yeah, I mean, I, I know it don't feel good, but at least they could at least give the, the accolades to, to where they're supposed to go. If you go do some some stuff like that, <laughs> at, least, at least, yeah, I mean, be like, yeah, shout out my man, because I ain't had a clue about that, but I, you know, right. I put my little thing on it. All right, say you put your little thing on it, but always go back to the origin and say where it came right. from. You know, it's funny you say that. Not too long ago, um, you know, one of my, uh, you know, crewmates, DJ Nikki Butters, shout out to my man, Nikki Butters. Uh, we had a discussion about that. Um, I, don't, I don't know how it came up, but it did because he had that mixer, Grandmaster Flash had endorsed, and I don't know what company it was, with a mixer, and it literally had a, knob, a button. Oh, it was okay. And it literally said Flash Former on that little button that you can use, I guess, to try to emulate or, you know, do a transformer. And honestly, that was total disrespect as far as I was concerned. Total disrespect. Gemini. Like you said, you can take something and put your little thing on it, but you're going to actually call the button a flash former, you know, like you're just trying to take the whole thing like it's yours. That was not cool at all. Not cool. And it goes back to the other things we discussed as well, you know, with that particular scratch. Um, I never really thought about it. It was made by Gemini. Okay. I remember, I forget what, yeah, the man factor, but yeah, it literally had J-Rock and literally said flash former on it. That's, I mean, come on, man, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it goes back to what we were saying about how things were. Um, you know, I just, you know, I, I have a couple of friends from time, I mean, over the years, you know, I, did, I never really tripped off of it that much. But as time went on and I saw, you know, basically the impact of it, it started bothering me a little bit, you know? And I have, you know, one, one friend of mine that I came up with, you know, DJ Easy T, my man Tone, he's sitting down with me one day and he said, you know, do you realize that this scratch that you created changed the whole game of DJing? And I never looked at it that way. Yep. And when you look at it now, moving forward, just about 90% of what people are doing is a variation of that. You know, shout out to my man, Cubert, you know, with the crab, you know, and he'll, you know, he says, hey, this came from this. You know, you have some people that will not give that credit. And that's when it started bothering me. I think when my man Tone said that to me, it started, you know, kind of bothering me a little bit, you know, never said anything. You don't see me on Facebook. You don't see me on Instagram. I I'm not one of those kind of guys, but, you know, I don't, I don't like, like I said, I try to keep things in house most times, but I am human. You know, and, and it's just and it's just not right. That's all. You know, you give people the respect, you know, things that they've created and what's due, you know, it is what it is. It's nothing like having something that like something that big. It's, well, accolades is one thing, mm -hmm. but when it turns into a, 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 a monetary thing, a money thing, and you're you're getting paid for this and it's the type of pay that you're getting is changing your lifestyle. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know what I mean, like, and it's, ah, it just, <laughs> I know it is crazy. It is, yeah, it is, yeah. it's, uh, it is, it's not good. You know, and at least bad, it's bad business, man. Slip a check under the door or something. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need, you know, just slip a little check. Be like, yo, yeah. I know, you know, I know, you know, and I know, but right. Take that man. You know what I mean? That's all I ask. Just, just a little respect, Jay. A little respect. Yeah. That's all. That's all. I don't think. I don't think that's too much to ask. I don't think so. You know? Not at all. Not at all. Not mm. at all. Appreciate all right, now you got your own crew. That I do. That I do. The mixed villains. What? What? Uh, how did that come about, and, and, and what made you put that together? Well, remember, we. I know you. Were, you were always talking about branding. You know, so we got to do our branding. Yeah. You know, um, well, I didn't, you know, it wasn't like a sole venture, you know, uh -huh. so um, it's probably about 10, 11 years ago. Uh, it was me, uh, my man, DJ Nikki Butters. Okay. At the time, DJ Tony Scratch, a.k.a. Easy T, and DJ Grimm. And we were sitting down at oh, a, yeah, we were sitting down at Champagne's um, one day. Grimm was playing. We just, you know, was sitting around talking about something we wanted to do. And what our idea was was we were trying to make, do you remember the pros? You remember that, the pros back in the day? Um, in our minds, for lack of a better analogy, we were going to be the urban version of the pros, meaning uh -huh. that you, you get this assembled this crew of guys that, you know, have a certain skill set, professionalism, you know, presentation, the whole thing. And 
that's what we were trying to build. So when we kind of got that nucleus together, we started kind of grabbing guys from, you know, different areas. Now we grew up with a lot of these guys listening to them, um, but we never were really affiliated, you know? So you got my man, DJ Technique, you know, he had his own following, you know, DJ Vader, you know, so he had his own following. We got DJ Stone. So everybody had their own little following. You know, we had DJ Flex. Uh-huh. Everybody had a following. So our idea was to, hey, we get these guys together. I mean, you, if, you know, you can play. You got a good sound system. You're professional. So our idea was to get, get this crew together. And when people needed events done, it didn't matter if they wanted Nicky Butters, Grimm, Spinbad. If one of us was booked, we knew that it, the party would get done correctly. Uh-huh. You know? So we have um, Leslie Simmons. She handles all of the business stuff. So we did it the right way. You know what I mean? It was, we tried to do it in such a way where it was professional. Um, it was, uh, you know, that was our, our, our whole, you know, idea. You know, um, it, was, it was crazy because, you know, my man DJ K-Swift, I'm sorry. There's so many things going through my head right now. Uh-huh. Kev, what's up, Kev? K-Swift, K-Swift, my man, he's in there. You know, so we grabbed all of these cats. You know what I mean? You know, you know Kev. You know, not just the turntable, it's, you know, Kev can play. <laughs> You know, uh-huh. and, you know, we would do all kinds of stuff. You know, Kevin and I, we used to do a lot of parties for just strictly Caucasians, you know, and a lot of people were scared to do that. Not DJ K-Swift, not DJ Spinbad. We were doing whatever, <laughs> you know, we would do stuff for ESPN, you know, different things we were doing under that Mixed Villains label. And um, sorry, Kev, I'm, my mind was going. I was thinking about something. I apologize. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, that's, that's how it started. And that's, what, you know, we just kind of grew from there. And um, that's what we do, man. You know, we have our own website, you know, and all of that, mixvillas.com. You know, we got the, the toll-free number. You know, we try to do it the right way. It wasn't it's just time. About, Get all them plugs in there. Get all them plugs in. Go ahead. <laughs> mixvillas.com. Yeah, you know, one eight five five mixvillas the number if you want to call. But, yeah, we, we you know, we try to do it the right way. And so that was something we came up with about, you know, about 10, 11 years ago. And, and it's, you know, the brand and it's working. You know, we, we built to a point where – the, the logo is, is noticed, you know, and it's noticeable, you know, that kind of thing. And we try to stay professional, man, you know, try to do it right. You know, you, you go on certain events because, I mean, I heard you talk like talking to Gary, man. You got to play clean. You got to do the right things, you know, to get there. So all of the DJs, you know, trying to come up, you know, do what you do, but you have to be professional, you know. Um, you can't go out there, you know, you have to look the part, you know, you have to present it the right way and you have to play. And one of our biggest things was, with our crew is, you know, you can have a DJ, Jay, as you know, they may have a nice sound system, but they can't play. They, they may be able to play, but don't have a good sound system and, and don't present themselves well. And that's what we wanted to do. We collectively, we wanted to make sure we cover all of those bases, the sound, the look, you know, the skill set and everything, you know, so that's, that's where we are, man. Mixed villains, man. My man. Now, and, you know. <laughs> Speaking of professionalism, mm-hmm. uh, I'm told that you're a stickler for that. And, <laughs> and as I as I look at your background, mm-hmm. pillows are neatly in balance, left, like right, it? center. You are you like exact <laughs> center of everything going on by you. I'm trying. So I, I did my homework, Gabby. I, I I did my homework. I, I got a lot <laughs> in it. <laughs> yeah, they say you're a stickler for that, and, and I see. I try, man. You yeah, I, I think it's a good thing. Good, good, you know, good way to be. You know, you go, uh-huh. you go far when you stay professional. You know, it takes you to a different yeah. level. You know, so, the skill, you know, like you skill is one thing. The skill, having the skill, is one thing. Uh, the other thing, you know, you still have to uh, be professional, like just like we just said, and and your attitude, man. Like a lot of thing, a lot of things. Uh, there's a lot of things that can kill your talent. Oh, definitely. You know? and, and some guys is just so cocky that they don't they don't realize that. But yeah. It could take a lot of food off your plate if, if, if you don't, you know, have your politics. I always say it to the younger DJs. Make sure you got your, your life is politics. Make sure you have your politics in order. Right. When you're dealing no. with people, everything you do, when you're on, on, on all the social media sites and all that, your life is politics. Yeah. And act accordingly or how you want people to perceive you out there. Right. What you put out there, you can't take back. Oh, no. Once it's out there, it's out there, you know? it. especially in the social media world, you know, yeah. and, and, and like you say, the way you present yourself. So the way we look at it, you know, from a professional point of view, if you're doing an event, I don't care if it's one person there or a thousand people play, do what you do. 
present yourself in the right way. You never know who's listening. You never know who's looking because we always say our next customer is in that crowd. Because most times when you think about it, Jay, when you get referrals, that's from someone that's been at an event you've done or heard about something you've done. So if you don't come across the right way, you're not going to get any referrals. You're not going to get any repeat gigs. They're going to, you know, oh, well, we're done with this guy. He was, you know, he was trash because not because you couldn't play. Maybe you're playing, you know, to an older crowd and, you know, you're playing dirty songs or a younger, younger crowd playing. You can't do that. You know, everybody, even though we're all adults in some aspects, you still, people don't want to necessarily hear that. You know what I mean? It is what it is. And that, that'll do you in sometimes, you know, it'll, it'll, I'm at that point myself. Like I'm, I'm getting older and, and, some of this stuff, like I'm, that's coming through the speakers, I can't stand. <laughs> like looking, you know how you look at a room, and and as a DJ, you gauge a room, and right, just you, they don't have to say a word. You just know that you messing up. <laughs> yep. Eh, I don't think I should have played. Eh, just don't. <laughs> Got to get out of that one real quick. Yeah, don't feel me. <laughs> and the person that hired you be over there, be like, oh, it's cool, it's fine. That's my aunt, and they don't care. Yo, like you, you're killing me right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's tough, man. It's and it's tough. And and one of the one of the things too, for a lot of young cats coming up, or you know, even guys out there in general, I refuse to play songs more than one time. Mm. I'm not doing it. It's why, you know, you you pace yourself in such a way, you know, you know Don't what the that. hits are, you know what the hits are. Don't play the hits at nine thirty, ten o'clock. And then now, you know, someone's coming in. Oh, I want to hear such and such. You you have to set that up. And once it's done, it's done. I'm not playing it again. That's it. DJ I'm etiquette. Dead. DJ etiquette 101. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to you have to pace yourself, man. You you have to build to that climax. You can't just come out the gate, you know, which is what we call, you know, in mixed villainsville trash time. You're just playing stuff, you know, getting that vibe. You know what I mean? People sitting around something they can bob their heads too. You know, uh -huh. you don't just you don't just go in on them. At, you know, at the beginning you can't do that because yeah, you know you have some DJs, man. And like I said, I have I, like I said, I have love for people, man. But I've heard some people play, and you're like, man, you know. I remember going to a, an event one time. Actually, it was a block party, you know. And this was when Cupid Shuffle first came out. You know, it's one of those songs. I mean, I, I, you know, people here. Yeah. This dude literally. I was probably at this block party as a guest, probably about two hours. He literally played Cupid Shuffle like seven times. I'm not lying. That's, come on, man. You, you're killing me. You're killing me. Why would you do that? You know, that's the kind of stuff I'm, that'll do you in, you know? Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you something, Jay. You can be at a party and you can play whatever the hot song is. Let's say you played it twice. Like, let's say you decided to go against what you, your normal thought is. No, I'm going to play it again before the end of the night. You know what's going to happen? Oh, man, Jay Rock, he played the same songs over and over. That's what they're going to say. You, yeah. that, that's all they're going to remember is you played that, that one song twice yeah. and, and they're going to take it and run with it. I don't want that moniker on me at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm always, I do. I've always been that way myself. And, and uh, I'm trying to teach a lot of the younger ones that because now they're, they're playing with two to four DJs on the, some events to teaching them or, or trying to instill in them to play their slot. Learn music to where you can be effective in any slot. If somebody puts you on nine to 10, you can kill nine to 10 without playing nothing that's supposed to be played at 12 o'clock. Right. If you're the yes. 11 o'clock DJ, throw that alley-oop. Bring yep. the crowd up to where they crazy, where he gotta go in. Yeah. But you know you know what music that, that, that is needed down the line. Yeah. You, know I mean? you should always be able to play, play. I always say it. They be like, yo, why you ain't doing this and that? I'm playing my slot. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean, uh, it's not my job. If you got me on a, a ten to eleven or eleven to twelve, it has, it's not my job to 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 you know. It's a movie. Every it's right. a movie, and, and all things got a climax. This is not for you to come in and do this, and then the next DJ come in because you want to see him fail. Right. No, it's no, not. It's not, it's, it's not about the DJs. It's about the people. Right. You know and mean? that's and that's big time. Yeah, you, you're right. You you're 100 percent correct. And, you know, it's funny you say that because, like I said, now hopefully, you know, the younger guys coming up at, you know, the cafe, you know, and anyone listening or watching, you know, that's a good, I mean, we always looked at that. I mean, you, you can't be, don't be intimidated by a time slot. You know, a lot of people come in, if you ask me, you got, let's say you got a room of DJs and they can all be heavy hitters and you, whatever slot you put me in, like you said, I'm playing my part. I'm not going to say, well, you know what? I'm going to play all of these hits. I don't care. That's not helping the party as a whole. Yep. You can't do that. Just just play your role. 
If you ask me, Jay, if you ask me to come to an event with you and say, oh, well, you know, can you start at all? I'm not going to be ego driven. Oh, well, I got to start at nine. You know, I don't care. I'm going to play my part. You know what I mean? I'm going to play my stuff and I'm going to do what I got to do to kick, you know, keep people in that mood, you know, until that climax comes, you know? Everybody want to come in late. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They don't wanna... <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm knowing like, that you got it, knowing you got a ten o'clock, eleven o'clock time slot. Oh, yeah. you coming in at ten thirty? Like, okay, all right. Yeah, I watched. Uh, it was a, a event at the Polaris. Uh, Mel Star mm. playing before uh, Kid Capri. Uh huh. Mel Star. It was uh, Doc B, Gary O, Mel Star, Kid Capri. Mel Star was, uh, I guess. Opened up for for Kid Capri, or or he was the, the DJ beforehand. Okay, Mel. Okay. And the way that he played, he played a whole variety of stuff to keep you interested. Right. And Fifteen minutes before it was time for Kid Capri to come on, he turned the heat up. That's a good DJ. Oh yeah, no <laughs> doubt. To, to be able to, to play around everything, knowing right. the, knowing what's coming. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, and 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 and. I, I respect that when DJs do that and oh, and, and, man. and and uh no no music good enough to be able to do something like that. Oh man, look, let me tell you something. First of all, I saw Mel Star in Atlantic City um at the the DJ convention, you know, they have and I went out there with my man Case Case Swift, you know, me Case Swift, Leslie, we went out there, man, to, it, it was it was a nice experience and my man Mel Star was out there first time I got to meet him in person. Shout out to my man Mel Star. Yeah. Um, the boy is incredible, man. And like you said, you know, I watch how he plays. And like you said, if you have uh, other DJs involved, like what we're talking about, we're not going to step on each other's toes. I'm going to do, you know, oh, it's, it's too much music. It's too. That's why you have to learn your skill and learn the music. And once you do, you know that you have that confidence that it doesn't matter when I'm playing, who I'm playing with or around. Some people you already know, you know, you go to a gig like, you know, and you know, like, if, if, if I've been around you a lot, I may know your vibe. And I'm like, all right, yep. J Rock's probably going, he's going to go here. And I'm not going to do that. That's, you know, but that's what we should do. And Mel Starr, you know, I've seen it. I mean, not only is he, you know, incredible as far as, you know, cut and scratch and he's smooth. I like his acapellas and, you know, all of that, you know, all that stuff. But he, um, he does it the right way. I mean, it's a lot of those guys. I mean, I, I see it a lot. And um, some of the heavy hitters, man, like I said, you know, some of the young guys coming up, you watching this, you listening. Do not step on toes. Get get your own skills up. Be able to, even if you had a set, you know, in your head, you know, or you had a lineup. And see, I don't do that. A lot of people do that. They'll go somewhere and say, hey, I'm going to play these songs. Yeah. And when you do that, you're limiting yourself. Because now, if the other DJ plays some of that stuff on that list, where are you going to go now? Because in your head, I have this playlist. Don't have a playlist. Yeah. You have a, a situation. You see the crowd. You vibe off of that. So if, if J-Rock's playing, and Mel Star is playing, and then I'm going on after or in between. If I heard what you're doing, what? Well, okay, I'm just going to vibe off of that, uh -huh. knowing the music. If you don't know the music, you can't accomplish that. You know, that's a good DJ. And, <laughs> that's a good DJ. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right, now to to our uh, we go we go tally up a little bit. So okay. to our our up and coming DJs and. Up and coming doesn't just mean young because we got some up and coming older DJs as well. Right. What's some advice or what's some uh, things that you can, or, or what do you want to say to them? Well, whether you're up and coming or just like you say, getting into it, no matter what age you are, always remember, stay professional, learn your craft. Don't, you know, everybody, we got so many DJs now, Jay, I don't know how many across the world. It's everybody's a DJ. Right. You know, everybody's a DJ now. And you and I both know that that doesn't mean that you can pull it off because you have a laptop and a controller or some turntables and a little library. Mm -hmm. You know, learn the songs, learn your craft, learn what you're good at. A lot of people, it, a lot of people like turntablism and scratching. That's not the way you start. You start by learning the music, learning to blend songs learning rhythm, learning, you know, bars. There's a lot to it. There's more to it than people believe that makes you a good DJ. That's, you know, that's how I see it. And if you're going to go out there, try to do the right things. And what I mean by that is, once again, to be conscious of your crowd, what you're playing. Don't, you know, when you get in equipment, I know everybody's financial situations are different, but try your best not to buy something in a temporary mode. Like, well, I'm just going to get this now 
you know, because I, but you really want something else. Hey, man, lay it away. Hold off on it. You're just wasting time, wasting effort, wasting money. A lot of people do that, you know. Don't go for what you think is cheap, you know, because it's going to sound cheap. You get what you pay for, you know. So take your time, you know, build yourself, build your library, build your brand, because there's nothing more important than your brand because that's all they're going to see. That's that they don't care about anything else. You know, once it's all said and done, because if you do a horrible job and if your you know, your brand is, is not where it's supposed to be, nobody cares, you know, but if you build it up to a point of that professionalism and everything else, you'll be able to go far, man. It'll take you other places because until you build that brand, you're going to only be on one level. You know, you won't be able to get the, the ESPN gigs and the, you know, and the, you know, the big time celebrity weddings and, you know, and playing for the salt and the banai, stuff like that. If your brand's not where it's supposed to be, no one's going to check you, you know, they're just not. Don't step on people's toes, you know. This is a brotherhood, man. It's, it's, it's a big, you know, that's what it is. It's not about hate. I know we have a lot of times with the battles. It's just fun. It's not about being you know, uh, hateful, you know, it's not about nothing like that, man. So even at the cafe, when you do the battles, don't take it serious, man. It's just, it's just a, a, a friendly competition, you know, That's I hate to see that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I hate to see, you know, when people, you know, we don't need this, you know, the old adage, the, the crabs in the barrel scenario. We don't need that. Philly has way too many good DJs. I mean, not just back in the day, even now. I mean, it's a lot of good DJs coming out of Philly, man. And if you look at the history of it, it's incredible. Some of the things that we've accomplished as Philadelphia DJs, it's it's almost unprecedented if you really think about it. Mm. You know, the things that people have done, you know, that people don't even realize. I mean, look like you got, you know, if you start back, obviously we all know the, the Jeff and Will thing, you know, they did their thing. You know, you got Tap Money, he was, you know, working with Kwame, you uh, know, you got Active, you know, working with Janet, you know, I'm working with Velvet DeVoe, New Edition, doing some other things. You know, you got cash doing this thing, PM Dawn and all kinds of, you know, stuff going on. I mean, you know, Lightning Rich, a lot of people don't realize he was doing, you know, working with Teddy Riley doing things before he passed. I mean, it's it's uh, it's so many different things, man. Um, DJ Miz, you know, winning competitions, you know, and it's, it's incredible, man. I think we were blessed um, at some point. I don't know how it happened. You know, I mean, much respect to, obviously, you know, all the New York DJs I like, you know, out there. You know, my man Mel Star, I said, you know, DJ Scratch, Cubert, uh -huh. you know, on the West Coast. But Philly, for, for a moment, was like a mecca. It was weird, man. I don't know how it happened, but it, it happened. It happened. I think this is just my opinion. Philly, uh, Philly is... I want to say it properly without, <laughs> without getting myself in no trouble. But Philly is more for the the battle and the the competition and the um, the the brotherhood is not there. Like going to going to other go going to other places and dealing with a lot of DJs in other cities and stuff like that. Right. Um, that love that they have for the craft they share. Right. Amongst each other, not individually. And there's a lot of individualism here that that breaks up the accolades of. Um, I see how they look at the Philly DJ, but the but the Philly DJ don't have that 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 mountain to stand on because it's all separate. Right. If that makes sense. Yes, I know you exactly. Where you're all going. them guys, man. You, you go to go to uh, to. Um, to some of the events and stuff and see how, how they interact with each other and, and they plan and it, it's more there is more about uh the music you got you got don't get me wrong you got to do some djs there that that, are, that that's crazy with it <laughs> it's, it's more about the music right. I, I see a lot of events with it with it with the djs not that great but they bring they bringing them gems out oh yeah and everybody is respecting them for that right that's what we don't have here yeah and yeah. we should yeah I, I, it's, I mean, it's, it's way too, it's too, it's too, we're too good, you know, as a collective group. Now that, that would enrich the, uh, that, that would enrich the, um, shit, what's the word I'm looking for? Camaraderie, the, the brotherhood, you know. Oh, the, 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 I can't even get it out. <laughs> <laughs> that, that enriches the, it's not the culture of what I'm looking for. I'm talking about our reputation. It, right. It, 
it, it brings our reputation up and, and has them respect it on a different level. They respect it because of, okay, everything is he did this, he did that, and them Philly DJs crazy. With, right. with, you know, when it comes down to the turntables and stuff. But that mecca word, oh, yeah. you have to create, you have to bring, everybody has to be in on that for it to be a mecca. Yes. You know what I mean? That's, that's, it was hard for me to get it out, but I got it out now. Right, right. <laughs> because everybody can be an individual. Everybody can do things individually. But if we don't stand as one at, like, we don't have to be on the same accord all the time. Right. If, if it comes down, push come to shove, if we can't stand that as one for that one situation or any kind of situation, mm-hmm. nobody's going to respect us like they're supposed to. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, you know, from what I been around, you know, like I said, the New York Cats and, you know, uh, different cities. I mean, you know, because uh, I've been all over, you know, even, you know, you're talking about Denmark and Germany, you know, you got DJs wherever in these big clubs, it's, and they're all, everybody's one, you uh-huh. know, and it's as it's, it's much, you know, as, you know, like I said, I, I would say, I don't know how we kind of became, I use the word loosely Mecca, but you know what I meant, uh-huh. with uh-huh. different things, you know, why, why aren't we together? Why, why is it he said this and that, and I, you know, I mean, me, me, I know the premise of the DJ is ego driven. I understand that. Yeah. But in this situation, what we're talking about, you're talking about different groups, different DJs as individuals, but as a whole, as a city, you know, we need to come together. I mean, it's, it's, and that's why I like the cafe. That's why I like that. And that's why, you know, I don't like to see beefs between guys, you know what I mean? And this Facebook stuff. And it's like, what is this, man? Why? I get involved. We get involved with the, with the battles every once in a while, but I don't want to make it a, a habit because right. it, like I said, friendly competition, I understand. Yeah, yeah. But sometimes to get out of hand, then uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't want to be responsible for none of that. Right. And then people are, you know, you know, people looking at each other all yeah. the time. Yeah. And, you know, J-Rock like had the camera. I know, right? <laughs> no, nah, you don't want that, you know. Like I said, if you got friendly competition, that's one thing. Yeah. But, I mean, look, man, I, I, you know, like I said, I've been blessed, you know, in this uh-huh. DJ game, and I appreciate you know, the, the DJ Cafe, UJ Rock, you know, your whole thing, you know, Music Factory Entertainment. Thank you, um, sir. I, I like, you know, I, you know, I saw your other interviews, you know, I was entertained, you know, and, um, you know, we all learn something, you uh-huh. know, you learn something. That's what's I, good I, about this. You know? All the questions and all the stuff that I had in here, all the information that I gathered, I've, I've learned stuff here today myself. <laughs> I did my homework yes. I did pretty good. <laughs> a lot of the things that you went into, I will go, yeah. I'm gonna ask you next. <laughs> right. So, Try because you know, that mean that mean I did a good job. <laughs> no, I appreciate you. You do you do a good job, man. And and like I said, Thank I'm you. you know once we get past this pandemic, man, you know you'll see me down there. I'm gonna be in the mix, man. You know whether I'm just standing or or admiring, you know, because you sit back and me, you know, I gotta. It's a lot, man. You know, I came up looking at guys, you know, like Cosmic Kev. I mean, you know, that was like my idol coming up, you know. So I know you got some of these young guys probably looking at you and the other guys in the cafe. You know, and you want to show them the right way, you know. And, and that's something that I I try to uh, tell the the marquee or name DJs. Mm-hmm. I'm not asked when I ask you to come out. I'm not asking you to come spin, spin right. if you feel fit. Right. You know I mean? But come out and shake some of these kids' hands. Yeah. Come out, put your hand on their shoulder, be like, "No, nah, do it this way." Right. Ten minutes. You ain't got yeah. to stay. You know yeah. how much impact that little few minutes that that um can have on a kid. Oh yeah, and, and change their style, and they can and, so, and, and absorb all that information that you told them in the ear. That can change some adults as well. You know, you got people out there that you know respect what you do and want to you know hone their skills. So you know, you know, if and I want to think another thing too, DJs don't be afraid of constructive criticism. You know what I mean? It's sometimes people see things that you don't see. So if someone came up to you and whether it's in a cafe or something to pull you to the side, as long as they're not putting you on blast, accept it for what it is because it'll make you better, you know, because we're not all perfect. Somebody might come up to me and say, man, you know, you played that song. I'm not going to take offense to it. You know, I'm saying, okay, you know what? I'm going to take that archive and move forward. But before we leave, J-Rock, I want to get some couple of things straight. A lot of people think that I'm this battle turntable is kind of dude. Dude, I was rocking parties before I was doing that. So I can play at parties. It's, saw, that is a big misconception. I saw a video of you, a video of you and um, it was in a, some kind of, it was a ballroom or something. And you had a floor full. And and it's, it's, it might've been like a half hour clip. So you was doing your yeah, thing. It's a, it's a misconception, you know, because uh-huh. when I came up, it wasn't called for. That's was the, the era of the performance and all of that. But I've always been a blending guy. 
a music guy, so I can play any event, you know. So I just wanted to get that out there because people think, you know, I'm in a, in a box, uh -huh. you know, versatile. And that's part of this, you know, whole mixed villains thing. So, you know, so before I go, I just wanted to once again shout out the mixed villains. My man, mixed DJ villains. K. Swift, DJ K. K. Swift, <laughs> Mickey Butters, DJ Technique. Uh -huh. DJ Vader, DJ Stone, that's what we're going to do, <laughs> DJ Grimm. And once again, Leslie Simmons for holding all this together, having my back, having our back. And I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Same here, man. I love you, man. I love you. Much love to you too, brother. And you are the man. Nah, I'm, I'm talking to the man. <laughs> <laughs> well, everybody, there you have it. The legendary DJ Spin Bad of the Mixed Villain Crew. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. All right, now, now, uh, now, you don't even have a page, so I can't even put it on your page. See, I know. I, well, mixed villains, mixed villains got a page. Okay. Mixed yeah. villains page. Well, I'm, I'm gonna put it up so people can, um, can watch it, and then it's also gonna okay. have a rebroadcast on Wednesday. Okay, cool. Yeah, Wednesday we'll do a rebroadcast, so people that missed it, you know, we we can sit down and watch it together in a watch party, so you know, huh. we can get get a, uh, we can ask like. I'm on the outside. I'm in it now, but now I could be on the outside and ask questions and talk to the people in the chat as well. So I appreciate you, man. And I hope everybody enjoyed this. I keep looking over at the camera over there. <laughs> the camera right here. Yeah. <laughs> I hope everybody enjoyed this and, and, and is enjoying the series. Um, this is our third of our influential DJs of Philadelphia. We're going to do the, uh, some of the other states that we have um, chapters in, the, the International DJ Cafe, where we have some chapters at. We're going to ask them who, who's their, um, their impact players as well. And, oh, you know, getting the history out there, man. Just getting the history oh, yeah, out yeah. there for our younger DJs that's coming up. They, they, some of them are just playing music right now, but in any area that you DJ in, you need to know the history of that area. And that might change your play as well <laughs> because, you know, you, you know what you come from. You know, you know what... what what, um, what kind of stock you come from and what kind of um, what, what you got to, to, um, to look forward to as a, a, um, not look forward to what you have those things that came before you you have to try to do better than that right all the time try to do better don't be don't be the one uh, just trying to do enough I see a lot of guys just want to do enough no nah, this thing is about being better than the, the last man Try to always, my kids, my kids, I always tell them, ah, oh, that was okay. Right. Man, I got all A's. I did this and that. That was okay. I'm never going to tell you that. You <laughs> I'm always going to keep it that way. So you always try to work a little harder to get a little better. Definitely. But thanks for tuning in. Uh, and see y'all next Saturday. I'm not doing the remix thing tonight. I'm, I'm out of here. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. And, and you too, man. I, I really enjoyed this interview. I learned a lot, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people out there learned a lot. So, with that being said, love, peace, and hair grease. All right. Thanks for having me, man. Yes, Later. sir. Peace. Peace.